the fifth kind. Click on the links in the description to watch the full video. In the study of human origins, scientists look for various indicators of intelligent or human behavior. Art, craft, and ritual practices can be found dating to 20,000 years ago. The remains of people of our exact design and build can be found in Ethiopia from around 200,000 years ago. The earliest shelters we have found are in Japan, dating from 500,000 years ago. The earliest evidence of hunting with spears dates from 400,000 years ago. If we prospect for the earliest use of fire, that puts us in Africa between 400,000 years ago and 1.4 million years ago. If we are all related, then how far back does our ancestral memory go? And how many external interventions may have happened in that time? The book of Ecclesiastes is a book in the Bible with roots in Sumerian literature. And its author says this, we have no memory of who and what went before us. And after a while, the people who come after us will have no recollection of us. Now, what's true of us as individuals may also be true of civilizations. My book argues that the book of Genesis holds ancestral memory of at least three resets in human history. Genesis 1 represents a planetary recovery and the nurturing of life on Earth, including human life. Genesis 6 represents a planetary cataclysm and a repopulation. And Genesis 11 represents the obliteration of a technological civilization and a reset of the human story where we re-evolve from a pre-language state. Now, these ancient narratives all tell of external interventions, uh, recalling some interventions that harm and some that assist. But most profoundly, they all tell of external intervention in our very design. Today's scientific consensus has concluded that our ancestors were descended from a primate ancestor shared by the great apes. The two forks of primate evolution separated as the result of what might seem a tiny modification of chromosomes. Great apes have 24 pairings of chromosomes, containing the instructions for how to build a great ape. Human beings have 23 pairings of chromosomes. So did the apes gain a chromosome? Or did humans lose one. In 2002, a research team in Seattle analyzing the human genome demonstrated that human chromosome number two was created by fusing two ancestral chromosomes together. In the April 7th issue of the journal Nature in 2005, a team led by Washington University School of Medicine published research which included an analysis of human chromosome 2. The team included scientists from Washington University, MIT, Stanford, the Wellcome Trust, the Sanger Institute, the National Yangmin University of Taiwan, among others. Their research uncovered new evidence that confirmed the Seattle team's finding that human chromosome 2 resulted from the fusion of two ancestral ape chromosomes. It contains 1,346 protein-coding genes, representing around 8% of human DNA. But what or who engineered this prehistoric fusion that enabled our ancestors to stand apart from apes and become truly human. Mesoamerican, Mesopotamian and Greek mythology and the narratives of the Bible 
all speak of a moment in human history when another civilization from another place interfered in human evolution. Now, the Popol Vuh, the Mayan mythology, is especially interesting because it speaks of a sequence of experiments to get us like this. And the product of the successful experiments was us and some ape-like creatures that live in the forest. That's what it says. Now, what's so interesting about that is that the Popol Vuh relates us to apes centuries ahead of Charles Darwin. And it's not that we're descended from apes in the Mayan story. The Popol Vuh says that we and these forest-dwelling apes were engineered from a shared ancestor. Well, that's amazing because that is exactly what contemporary research, including DNA research, is telling us today. Our ancestral narratives, so many of them speak about complex decisions being taken about upgrading human intelligence and consciousness. And we're told that there are conflicts among these other powers as to how intelligent or conscious they wanted the human beings to be. Now these decisions followed a period in which the earlier iterations of humans had been engineered as workers for this other species. And the Mayan mythology of the Popol Vuh is very frank, plain speaking, when it says the engineers said to each other, let us make avatars for ourselves to work for us. Click on the links in the description to watch the full video. Author and researcher Paul Wallace probes the world's ancient mythologies for clues about the origins of the human race and has published several books in the field of mysticism and spirituality. In the last decade, his work has probed the world's ancient mythologies for the insights they hold on our origins as a species and our potential as human beings. Paul's work in church ministry has included training pastors in the interpretation of biblical texts, working as a troubleshooter for communities of faith, and serving as an archdeacon in the Anglican Church in Australia. His background as a senior churchman makes it all the more surprising that Paul's latest book argues that human origins lie in our prehistoric contact with extraterrestrial species. You can find out more information and links to Paul Wallace in the description below, along with links to his published works.